Greetings, minders everywhere. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, I sort of wanted to scratch an itch, I guess, in this piece. You know, sometimes I'm very random on how I pick and choose what I'm going to do or paint. I uh, was just looking at this Hanamula toned gray sketchbook and thought, mm, what can I do? Let's see what gouache does in here. What can I do that's different or just a lot of fun? And uh, I wanted to do a sort of a fantasy piece, so I just got my pencil out and started sketching. This is sort of some gestural sketching that I'm doing. Uh, I wanted a big gnarled sort of a fantasy looking tree to take center place in this and thought, well, let's just start drawing and see what happens. And I also wanted to kind of really push the envelope on mixing transparent watercolor with gouache. The idea being taking the transparent watercolor as far as I could and then just using the gouache uh, to light the scene up, paint the highlights, basically bring some light and life to it. In reality, a fantasy piece is great for this because a lot of light effects are used in fantasy art. A lot of deep, dark colors that are sort of studio lit, I guess, you know, theatrically lit uh, might be another way to put it. And that's really difficult to plan and mask and work out in transparent watercolor. You can, but you'd almost have to do the complete piece first. In other words, I could use this as a study maybe, and then go back and do it as a transparent watercolor piece, which might actually kind of be a, a neat sort of an experiment. But I sort of uh, resigned myself to the fact that this would be watercolor for the dark middle tones and the deep tones. And then I would come in and paint all the light uh, highlights and light middle tones in gouache. So I'm just continuing to sketch this out. Um, I have a lot of concept art that I've sort of saved on Pinterest. If you follow me on Pinterest, check out my board that's called In a Fantasy Far, Far Away. And I've, I've tagged or saved a lot of images there. Uh, probably the most fantasy sci-fi type art being done today is done primarily for film and video game. And environmental art basically has done its concept art. It's a big uh, market for that. There's also a lot of competition for those jobs. But you'll get a lot of great ideas by looking at that kind of art. This industry, the fantasy uh, sci-fi art industry, used to be primarily for books, uh, book covers. But I think it's, uh, and there is still some of that, I think it's it's sort of uh, expanded to the digital uh, realm and the film industry and the video game industry. So you just get a lot of concept artists out there doing environmental paintings uh, as concepts for those products. Here I'm starting to lay in the background washes and I'm just going to work uh, light to dark as usual uh, and background to foreground. And I knew kind of up front that this, I may run into some problems since this is not cotton paper, um, especially with the wet watercolor washes. This background here is probably the wettest wash I will use. The rest are going to be kind of dry. You'll see at the end, I'm pretty happy with how this ended up, but I would love to do something like this again on good cotton paper. Since I did kind of run into some of the shortcomings, mainly paint lifting too easily once I got heavy layers down. In the end, it's okay for gouache. Usually gouache works pretty well on non-cotton paper. So I just uh, I wanted to get through this with watercolor, get all these deep, dark, middle dark to fully dark tones and put that in in watercolor. A lot of this was just designed as I went and I really did look at it as a design. So there is a tiny bit of stylization going on and a lot of sort of fantastic unreal vibes. Here I'm starting in on the tree. You can see my color scheme that I sort of worked out over on the left. I wanted to keep the colors uh, a little more fantasy related and a little less um and a little less true to life but we're just gonna start working on this tree and um, i'm just gonna take the values down until i feel like they're as deep as they can be if you watch this channel much you know how much i love trees and i, I doubly love doing these sort of old gnarled 
storybook looking trees. You know, just a little bit of background and story about me. I originally thought this is what I wanted to do was fantasy and uh, storybook, sci-fi sort of art. Well, we're going back now. We're going back down probably to the 90s. I was starting to get big into airbrush. It's before digital art really took off. I could go into any bookstore in the sci-fi fantasy section, look at a book cover and pretty much tell you who had painted it. I was keeping up with the industry and who was painting what. Um, the, the problem I think was is that it's a brutal industry. It's very, very competitive. And when something is competitive, when the industry is competitive like that, uh, it's it's kind of uh, akin to being an actor or an actress. It's difficult to get work unless you're very, very good. And when you do get work, you don't hardly get paid for it. Again, unless you become famous. So everybody wanted to be one of two, th one of three things, actually. Uh, every rising artist, you know, the, as a kid dreamed of being either a comic book illustrator, a children's book illustrator, or a fantasy sci-fi illustrator. Those were the hot genres, and everybody wanted to do it. So you had a lot of artists out there giving their art away almost for free, just so they could kind of get a foot in the door, which, by the way, is not the way to do it. You'll never really do well approaching it that way. Anyway, that's a whole different topic. But I really thought I wanted to do this for a living. I had a mentor who was a sci-fi illustrator, uh, pretty good one. I used to do some underpainting for him. He did a lot of sci-fi tech, did book covers. He did gaming covers and things like that. He had some great contacts, you know. Um, he was a good bit older than me, and there was kind of this idea that uh, he, as he brought me along, he might be able to introduce me to uh, some people in the industry. That all kind of fell by the wayside. You know, I had a family that I needed to support, and I couldn't do a lot of work put a lot of time into that industry and really make a go of it so bit by bit my love of it never changed but i abandoned it as an idea for a career um i'm kind of excited about the idea that i might do more of this though for this channel you know, I, I just think it would be a lot of fun and I, as i said at the beginning it scratches an itch that i think is a lot of fun okay so now you can see all the dark tones are laid in all the middle to deep dark tones and now I'm going to start lighting things up and this is where it gets exciting it's bringing in that gouache and I put a little bit of a horizon sort of a light source back there and I want to pool the light on the right side of the tree and on the ground uh, below that one root that extends out to the right so everything is going to be kind of directed towards that I'm using uh, mostly white gouache. Uh, I'm mixing it with either some colored gouache or at times even my watercolor to get the colors in there that I need. And I really, really find this part to be the most fun part. And that's picking out these little areas where light hits. And you just get the feeling, you know, of the, the fantasy, the storybook feelings developing as you start to light up these little rocks and roots and ground pieces and all that stuff so lots and lots of fun and as you know i'm not talking a lot about technique uh, but you can glaze squash actually pretty well you can put it in in thin layers and build it up it's it's actually the way i prefer to do it just like with transparent watercolor in fact uh, one of my favorite techniques to get vibrant color is rather than to mix a vibrant color is a bright color I would paint it in white and then come back and glaze over a very vibrant color on top of that it actually usually comes out a little more successful that way so as you've been watching and following along you see I've been working my way down from the big shapes to the little shapes the little details and just sort of um, bringing interest into the center area a sort of a little glade there by this tree now I did bring out some gouache uh, to strengthen the deeps. Um, I, I was having a little bit of trouble with the deep purples on the tree and even some of the deep greens. Uh, lifting and, and kind of uh, re-wetting what I'd already put down. And the gouache uh, is a little better at sticking. And you can get some pretty deep tones with gouache. So I went back and just strengthened those shadows. 
And now, you know, pretty much from here to the end, we're just going to start picking out details, strengthening highlights and uh, adding things that improve the composition and frame the piece a little better, frame the center of interest, I guess. I will uh, mention one fantasy illustrator that I really love. I've been looking at a lot of his work lately, and that's Justin Gerard. Check out his work. It'll inspire you, especially if you're a Lord of the Rings fan. He does a lot in that uh, genre or in that subject. It's a lot of reworkability and quash, and that's, I think, what makes it so popular. It's easy to blend. I like that it, it's such a great partner for watercolor. The only thing frustrating about it is that uh, light colors tend to dry darker. You have to keep layering those in until they get uh, as bright as you need them to be. Here I'm adding these leaves and these sort of branches and vines. Just to kind of dense up the details but also add some framing to the center of interest. And just give more of the feel that this is a forest glade of sorts. And while there's a lot about this piece that has opaque uh, highlights from the gouache, uh, really, I would say it's probably 80% transparent watercolor. So the two work great together, as I said. And if you use gouache with watercolor and you want to keep your transparent watercolors clean, always go the rule of thumb that you'll, you can bring watercolor into your gouache palette, but don't bring gouache into your watercolor palette, your transparent watercolor palette. Unless you don't mind uh, it, that sort of chalky, opaque uh, paint mixing with your transparent colors. Just a little rule of thumb I like to follow. Well, let me know what you think of this kind of art and seeing this sort of thing. I, I certainly think that I want to do more. All right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support. It means an awful lot, and we will see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.